The Link 2010 planning tool is a free, must-have resource from Microsoft. It takes only a few minutes to run through, and by answering a series of questions, we'll recommend a deployment topology and produce several reports and requirements to aid in the planning and installation of Link Server 2010. The completed design can be saved and modified before exporting to Visio, Excel, or Topology Builder for importing directly into CMS or the Central Management Store later on. The planning tool starts right here, with some external links on the left, a few items on the toolbar, and buttons in the body of the page to get started, jump right into designing sites, or open a saved topology. For this example, we'll start right at the beginning. Now, this tool is really very self-explanatory. Read the heading and answer a question or check a couple of options. In this demo, I'll walk through a typical installation though your planning, of course, will vary. The first question, will we be deploying audio and video conferencing? The default is yes, and I'll click Next. We'll be using dial-in conferencing to allow our users to dial in using a phone. Obviously, we'll need web conferencing, which brings us to Enterprise Voice, which we'll use for our Voice over IP solution. Users will love making calls directly from Link or Outlook. So we can take advantage of voicemail, we'll want to enable Exchange Unified Messaging, as well as Call Admission Control, which installs bandwidth management into the link setup. Next, we'll add a recommended monitoring server role to the plan, which collects call detail records and other metrics from UM sessions. And for compliance reasons, we'll choose to deploy the archiving server, which does what OCS's unified messaging server did previously. It saves logs of IM conversations and data from conferencing sessions. Now only a couple more questions, and we're on to designing the site. Here, we have the option to add federation to the plan. This is required to establish communications between our organization and other external organizations. The options here are to enable federation with other organizations, enable federation with OCS Server 2007 or 07R2 users, and enable federation with public IM providers, which lets our users chat with others using MSN, Yahoo, and AOL chat. And finally, yes to high availability, which deploys standby servers for failover support. The features overview is now complete. Next, you're asked to enter information about each site in the Design Sites wizard. Click Design Sites to start. Like the screen says, a central site is where you deploy a front-end pool and home the users. You're asked to enter a site name and number of users. For demo purposes, I'll enter the site name HQ, Headquarters, and plan for 500 users. Notice the features we've already enabled are checked here. After clicking Next, We'll enter the SIP domains that will be used for remote access, starting with the primary. For this demo, I'll add just one. We'll want to take advantage of VMs, virtual machines, in our deployment, so I'll choose Yes here. Later, we'll be able to virtualize specific server roles in the planning tool. Over the next few screens, we have a chance to review and configure settings related to conferencing. Voice. Voice infrastructure and Exchange Unified Messaging. It's important to remember this is simply for planning purposes. Everything can be changed within Link Server after installation. On this screen, you'll set specifications to allow users outside the firewall to access presence, IM, and web conferencing. In the first section, you'll decide whether to enable external user access and choose the location for the edge servers. Next, select the percentage of users that are external and choose the method for load balancing, and verify whether you want high availability and that you want to deploy a director at the primary data center. We've already decided that we'll use VMs in our organization, so on this screen we can choose which roles to virtualize. Based on the capacity of our plan topology, Microsoft recommends co-locating mediation servers on the front-end servers, and that's fine, so I'll click Next. We're just about done, but first we'll add our branch sites. And for this demo, I'll add three and the number of users per branch. We'll stick with one central site for now, and we're done. Now, the planning tool will draw our topology. And here it is. 
At the top of the diagram are the three branch sites we added, and the central site we called HQ, which can be expanded with a double click. You'll want to hover over each shape for a description, and drill down on others, such as our host, which provides even more details. Now we can get back to the top with a link under Actions. Under the diagram are some useful tabs, for instance, to review the Edge Network Diagram. There's sample data here, which can be edited so you can plug in your own IPs and addresses. Take a look at the reports, which are really comprehensive and show certificates, firewall, and DNS details. And finally, a summary at the end. You'll want to save the site design for later, or export to Visio, Excel, or directly to the Topology Builder, which can be imported into the Central Management Store CMS later on in Link Server 2010.